Hello everyone and welcome back. Now in the previous video we went through a long extended lecture on linear planar dynamical systems, right? And there's a reason we spent so much time there and it will become apparent in the coming videos because really linear dynamical systems form the basis of how we're going to analyze nonlinear dynamical systems. And in order to make a step towards working, uh, working with nonlinear dynamical systems, at least planar ones, uh, we are going to spend this lecture talking about the interpretation of them as vector fields and sketching out those vector fields. This will be similar to how we started the previous video where we looked at that mass spring system and sketched out the vector fields and got some sort of intuition for what was going on in that uh, example. So what is it that I mean here? Well, let's think about a general planar dynamical system. So I'm just going to write it as x1 and x2. You can use x and y if you want. The only reason I want to use x1 and x2 is because this allows me to sort of write it compactly. Okay, so or sort of, let's say compactly, I just want to write it as x dot equal to f of x, where x is equal to x1, x2, and you know, f of x is this vector valued function. Okay, so this is a typical thing that we do in dynamical systems. It just saves us from writing, you know, sort of the same thing over and over and over again. I just like to write it compactly. Now, of course, I will make it clear when I'm talking about, you know, one dimensional or two dimensional or three dimensional or whatever it is dimensional systems. But for now, let's think about this. Now, remember, how we interpreted uh, dynamical systems in one dimension. We interpreted them as sort of a particle moving along a line, sort of flowing along a line. In this case, we should interpret these things as, again, a particle that is flowing. But in this case, now it is flowing through, so flowing through the two-dimensional plane so it's flowing through R2 now. And you can kind of think of this as being your initial condition, x, x0. And you're moving in time on this parametric curve x of t. And we saw previously with those linear systems is that it's these sort of parametric curves that we use to draw what's called a phase portrait or a phase diagram. Uh, of these, or phase plane diagrams, sorry, of these planar dynamical systems. And when it comes to nonlinear systems, there are a few salient features that we're going to try to highlight, okay? So salient features, features of phase portraits or phase plane diagrams, whichever you would like to call them, right? So the, the beauty, maybe the most frustrating thing about dynamical systems is that we have, you know, 50 different words for all of the same things. But phase portraits, phase diagrams, phase plane diagrams, uh, these are all the sort of same thing. Now we think about these sort of salient features that we had for a one-dimensional dynamical system. It was really just one thing, and it was the fixed points, right? We would always just figure out where the fixed points were. You put those dots on the line, and you're sort of moving to and from them. Well, we don't lose the fixed points in two dimensions. We still want them. So they're still the most important thing, the fixed points. So this is gonna give us you know, a little way of things to look for when sketching these out. So these things satisfy f of zero equal to zero. Now it's a little harder, right? You're satisfying two, two equations equal to zero, but you have two unknowns, so okay. So it might be a little bit more complicated for you, a little bit more math, same basic premise. But in higher dimensions, uh, we saw that there are other things to care about. One of those was closed orbits. Remember the mass spring system? These things are periodic solutions. So if you think about the mass spring system, it had a fixed point at zero, zero at the origin, 
and it had a bunch of closed orbits. Those are important, right? They represent periodic solutions. And they're going to become more and more important as we move through this lecture series. So these things would satisfy, satisfy x of t plus t is equal to x of t uh, for some t greater than zero, right? And we've seen what they look like in the phase plane. They're closed circles, closed orbits. Okay. Then something we would also like to look at, we would like to look at the arrangement of trajectories near the fixed points and closed orbits, okay? So arrangements of trajectories near fixed points and uh, closed orbits. Okay? And the fourth thing here is going to be the stability of fixed points uh, fixed, sorry, fixed points and closed orbits. Now, okay, let's compare and contrast this to what we saw in a two uh, in a one dimensional dynamical system. Again, we didn't have closed orbits. We ruled those out with the existence uniqueness theory and we had fixed points and then we just sort of analyzed their stability and that's about it. Now I've got a few more things to look at. Right? And in particular, we've got closed orbits, and I want to differentiate between three and four. Four would be, you know, really sort of getting down and saying, is this stable? Is it unstable? Is it a saddle? But number three is actually really sort of looking at how things behave. You know, if you do have a saddle point, which direction is moving away? Which direction is coming in, right? So there's a geometric uh, interpretation here and an important understanding of the sort of geometry of the plane that is necessary. Because we have a whole other direction to move in, we have to ask ourselves, what is the sort of angle of approach that things are taking, right? So again, although these two things, you know, on the surface, you might think that they're the same, they have a very different uh, uh, interpretation. I would say number three is more geometrical, number four is more analytical, as we'll see in the next video. Now, the first step towards getting all of this information is sketching out uh, what's called a vector field, okay? So similarly, we should always interpret this thing as a vector field. It tells us that if we know our position, then we know our velocity. And how this would work is that if I have this curve here, then if I look at any point on the curve, uh, let's say this one, for example, then x dot represents the tangent line to that curve, right? So anywhere I do it, I get this. This is always giving me the tangent line, right? And this is how we use the, the idea of a vector field to sort of sketch out uh, some of these phase planes. So let me, let me show you an example. Let's, let's actually get our hands dirty. And let's see how we can interpret this. So let's do this one. X dot is equal to X plus E to the minus Y and Y dot is equal to minus Y. Okay, so first things first, this is a nonlinear dynamical system. So I cannot, you know, there's no matrix associated. There's no eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So the question is, what should I do? Well, let's start with the thing that I know. Let's look for fixed points. Equilibria, steady states. This is when x dot is equal to y dot is equal to zero. Okay, well, this tells me that y has to be equal to zero, which tells me x has to be equal to minus one. Okay, so there's only one fixed point, which is given by minus one comma 
zero in the plane. So if I'm going to sketch out the vector field associated to this thing, I will start by putting on my fixed point. Remember, it's one of my salient features, one of the most important things that I can sketch on here. Right? It's, it's a solution that I know exists. That's the first piece of this. Now the question is, what else can I do, right? If you think about what I did with uh, the, the, um, the, the mass spring system, I set different values. I set C1 and C2 to zero each, and I kind of looked at what happens to the solution on each one of those lines. And I also looked at what happens when say X was equal to zero or Y was equal to zero. And I said, are the vectors vertical or horizontal or what's happening here? We can do the same thing for these nonlinear systems. And the way that you do this is through what are called the null clines. So the null clines, this is when just x dot is equal to zero or y dot is equal to zero. You don't need both of them equal to zero. If you have both of them equal to zero, you get fixed points, okay? But let's take a look at what information we could get from this. So let's start with x dot equal to zero. This tells me that, so if I set this equal to zero, I get x is equal to minus e to the minus y. Okay, it's a curve, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a little complicated, uh, but it's a curve nonetheless. Now, what is important about this curve? Well, these are tangent vectors. And what happens when x dot is equal to zero? That means that the vector is purely vertical. It only has a y component. It does not have an x component, right? So it's either pointing straight up or straight down. So what we know here is that on this curve, vectors are vertical. Okay, so that's information that we could probably use, right? So the first thing is, how do we sort of put this on? Let's actually sketch. There's our first null line, okay? So I'm going to say x dot is equal to zero on this thing. There is no coincidence, it goes through the fixed point. Why? The fixed point is when both of these things are equal to zero. I'm looking at just one of them, so clearly this is a subcase. Okay, now I know the vectors are vertical here. The question is, are they pointing up or are they pointing down? Well, let's take a look. When x dot is equal to zero, I'm on the curve, no matter what. All right, so it's not my best drawing, but it's, it's there. Now, Y, the y dot component determines if I'm pointing up or down. So for example, if I am on this portion of the curve where y is positive, then y dot is negative. So I'm pointing down along this curve. Just like in the previous video, I don't care about how big these things are. I just want to get a feel for this. Similarly, when y is negative, then y dot is positive and I'm pointing upwards. Okay, so this is sort of the beauty of the null clines. It allows me to see where the vectors are pointing in very limited scenarios, right? In this case, my vectors are purely uh, vertical. So I just need to figure out if they're pointing up or pointing down, and that comes from the other component. Let's do it again. Let's do y dot equal to zero. Okay. Well, y dot is equal to zero. That's just when y is equal to zero. That's an easy curve. That's this right here. And so the question is, what happens here? Well, if y dot is zero, I only have an x dot component, which means that on this curve, vectors are horizontal. Okay, so I'm just moving left and right on this curve. The question is, am I, when am I moving left and when am I moving right? Okay, so you sort of have a phase line diagram here. Okay, so 
on y dot equal to zero, you have y is equal to zero. Then the question is, what is x dot doing? Well, first of all, y was zero. So let's tack in some more information. So this tells me x dot is equal to x plus one when y is equal to zero, right? Because I put zero in here, this becomes a one. So now x plus one is going to be positive whenever x is to the right of minus one. So I get rightward moving vectors, right? They're completely horizontal. And in this case, they're moving to the right when x is larger than minus one. When x is less than minus one, everybody is moving to the left. So this second null cline is the y dot equal to zero null cline. Okay, so just two curves. That's all that I needed to do. One of them have horizontal vectors, one of them have uh, vertical vectors. So the question is, how do I sort of fill in the rest of the information? Well, it's actually pretty easy. This is the beauty now. Because I have divvied my, my uh, phase portrait or my vector field up into four un unique components. Now, the vector field is continuous. That means the transition from here to here happens continuously. And so basically what you can do is you can look in each one of these wedges and you can use whatever the vectors that define the sides of it, that's going to help you to understand what the vectors inside look like. So for example, in this quadrant or this little component here, vectors up here are pointing to the left and here are pointing up. So that means that inside of this thing, they're pointing up and to the left. Same basic thing I did for the mass spring, remember? Again, I don't care how long they are or exactly how they're positioned. I just get a good feel for how things happen here. In here, pointing to the left, pointing down. So I sort of get a down and to the left vibe going on here. You don't have to be too precise. Again, dynamical systems is about using your knowledge of calculus, your sort of geometric understanding from calculus in order to interpret these things. All right, so down to the right over here and up into the right over here. Look, at, I'm not a good drawer. I'll be the first one to tell you that. But that gives me all the information or a lot of the information that I need here. The first thing that I could do if I wanted to sort of analyze this thing, I could ask myself, is this fixed point stable? Well, again, just from sort of looking at the vector field here, you can see that the fixed point uh, doesn't look stable. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to put an asterisk here, but uh, minus one zero does not look stable. In the next video, we're going to show how to do this analytically. But for now, let's just let's say it doesn't look stable. Now, why did I say it doesn't look stable? Because I can see things pointing away from it. When you have a stable fixed point, you see everybody is looking at you, right? All of the vectors are pointing in towards you, but you can see there's this splitting happening here, right? It, it looks like, now, it looks like a nonlinear version of a saddle point. Why am I saying that? You're sort of looking towards it in the vertical direction. You're looking away from it in the horizontal direction. Now, I don't know that for sure, right? I haven't done all the math yet, but I get a pretty good intuition of what's happening from the vector field, right? If I start a solution here, what's going to happen? Probably going to go like this. If I start it here, what's going to happen? Probably going to go like this. If I start it here, what will happen? Go like this. Here, go like this. I have a pretty good idea, and it all comes from just this basic notion of the vector field, okay? So the ideas are here but we're missing a little bit of analysis. So in the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to actually look at how to analyze the stability of these fixed points analytically. Okay, so in number three, we sort of have this geometric argument. We're getting towards it with this. Number four, we have an analytic argument for stability, which we'll come back to in the next lecture. So I'll see you then.